Hey guys, so here I was thinking we were done for the season, but no, apparently the snakes have got different plants. I've had two snakes come in in the last two days. Yesterday I had a golden crown snake come into care, which you sit there, you wouldn't believe it, it's actually the first one to come in for the season. I hadn't had one all season, and then when the season's done, I get a golden crown snake. So that little fella had actually been in a dog's mouth, and he's tiny, he's literally this big. He'd been in a German Shepherd cross Husky's mouth, so I don't know how he even survived, but he's, he's got a couple little marks, lumps and bumps on him from where the dog picked him up and put him in the bed. He's looking like he's gonna have a couple weeks of antibiotics, and then he can be shifted back out into the wild. And then today, of course, another snake. <laughs> A red-bellied black snake, this one. Right in the middle of town, really odd spot. He was in some long grass. They'd come through and mowed it all yesterday. Uh, no, Wednesday, today's Friday. And it's just chunked him out the side, big chunk out the side of him. So thankfully enough, I was able to catch him, have a good look at him. And you could see the injury is sort of already scabbed up. We took him down to the vet, as always, the amazing North Richmond vets. Took good care of him. We had a really thorough look. We cleaned up all the wounds. It was so deep. It was like you could see a little bit of the spine, but it hadn't injured anything so bad. The snake had full mobility. It's pooing fine. It's pooped on me every time I touch it. It's lively as ever. There wasn't really much skin left to stitch back together, which would speed up the healing process. But instead, we just cleaned it. We've actually done something different to what we've done in the past. We've put some Manuka honey on and then wrapped it in this Band-Aid type thing, which we're gonna have a look at now. And hopefully that'll just clean it up over time. And obviously this snake's gonna have to spend the winter with me. It's gonna be much like the Eastern Brown Snake I had over winter last year. It had the huge chunks out of it from the netting. This is gonna be another long process. Hopefully he pulls through. And if he does, it'll be another testament to the strength of these snakes. Let's get this guy out of the bag, and I don't know how this is going to be put together while I'm filming it, so I might say a little bit of the red belly, a little bit of the golden crown, but bear with me, it'll all make sense when it's getting put together. But now, let's get this guy out of the bag and have a look at what we did at the vet. He's actually looking a little bit better already. You can see the two injuries on him there. One up here, one further back, and the worst one's sort of right in the middle of the body there. Might be hard to see on the GoPro, but I'll get some clips with my phone. You can see it's actually wrapped up, so we've locked that Manuka honey in on that raw flesh, on that deep wound there, and that is just gonna heal things up. This snake's been through the wars already. He's got another little scar up next to his head. So I have no worry about this snake surviving, it's just gonna be how long does the process take. I'll get a couple phone clips, get him back in the bag, and then get an enclosure set up for him and get him nice and comfortable. All right, hopefully this video makes sense when it's put together, but I'll see you when I see you. That's the back injury, the further one back, the smaller one. And you come up here, this is the much worse, the much deeper one. You can obviously see it's covered up. Got that Manuka honey in, and hopefully, gonna get this guy back fighting fit. Another little wound there. God, poor bugger, poor little bugger. We'll get you there, my friend, we'll get you there. Oh, hey guys, oh, jeez. This day ain't getting any better. I was about to say, I've had an absolute disaster of a day. Been running around like a bloody headless chicken because I smashed the door on the enclosure and then this morning top of me hot water tank's blown off so I've got to sort out one of those I don't function well without a shower. But I do have something cool and some good news. Have a look at this. Look at the size of him. Tiny, tiny, tiny little golden crown snake. Tiny. <laughs> So this little dude was actually found last night. Someone came home and he was just in the dog bed. You wouldn't believe it, the dog was a husky cross German Shepherd. So I don't know how there's anything left of this snake whatsoever. The dog must have just picked him up, sort of carried him to his bed, put him there. I can tell you damn sure if it was a cat, there'd be nothing left. Really interesting. <laughs> Surprisingly, there's only, I'll get some close-ups with my phone. But there's, there's only a few tiny, tiny little puncture marks along the body. There's no injuries to the spine. He's moving everything well. And he's really, really active. So incredibly good signs for this guy. So I'm going to run him down to North Richmond Vet, get some antibiotics. He'll probably have just a week or two of that and then get him straight back out into the wild. Absolutely cracking little snake. I think this is actually the first one I've had this season. Thought I wasn't going to get one. Alrighty, oh, 
There's our little golden crown snake. I can't remember what I have or haven't told you, but he, oh, look at him. <laughs> he is ready for his second shot of antibiotics. We're gonna get that into him now. It's very tricky because he's such a little snake and I need to put a needle in him. As you can see, he's incredibly, oh, look at that. He's incredibly strong. <laughs> I wish you could see on close up there if I hold him up there. We are. You can see he's incredibly strong, incredibly agile. He's having no worries moving around, so he's looking really good and he's gonna be going back home ASAP. So let's get a jab into him. Oh, you're actually not gonna guess it. I picked up another red-bellied black snake today that was attacked by a dog, actually across the road. Here I was thinking I was finally gonna have a winter with nothing in care. No, no, no. You had different plans, didn't you? Uh, so it's so, so tricky. Look at the size of the needle. It will go in one side of him and out the other. So I just need to be so careful just to get in under the skin. That is stressful. Woo. Alrighty, thank God for that. That is so stressful. Like, look at that. He's just such a small little snake. I'll probably get one more into him during the week and then he can go back home. Other than that, I'll give you guys a look at our new red-bellied black snake tomorrow. Alrighty, you guys sit there. Hopefully you'll be able to see me if I am here. <laughs> Looks good. I think. Yeah, there we are. Here is our red-bellied black snake that I got from that house there, directly across the road. Had him for a few days. I've actually had him for about a week now and he's looking pretty darn good. When I first picked him up, he was pretty limp. He'd been bitten by a dog, wasn't trying to kill him or anything. The dog just had him in his mouth and was running around like a pork chop. The owners obviously went chasing after the dog, caught the snake. Luckily enough, I live across the road. So, here is our little red-bellied black snake. And as you can see, Absolutely nothing wrong going on there. Beautiful, beautiful little snake too. He's quite calm. Now, if we do have a look here, let me put his head back in the bag so he's a bit more calm. Put your head in there. So you can see a few lumps and bumps up the body there, obviously from where he was bitten. Thankfully, no spinal damage, which is our main issue when dog attacks occur. We always, always worry about spinal issues, but this guy has complete movement, very reactive to the tip of the tail there. Whole body's moving, there's nothing to worry about. If it was summer, I'd probably keep him a little bit longer just for those lumps and bumps to go away and hope he's a bit more comfortable. Winter coming on very quickly, we don't wanna hold him any longer than we have to. There you go, you can see the tail. <laughs> Wiggling around there, so definitely no spinal injury there. Probably just some soft tissue damage because it is it is very different shape there. Maybe it hasn't just been eaten that well this summer. But I also noticed, we'll be able to see on my phone, got a couple little ticks, so we may as well pull those off for him. And get a tick there. I think I saw one higher up too. There was one higher up near the head, so we'll pull those little ticks off him. They don't affect him too much. But while we got him, May as well get them off. And typical, no internal issues, because he's squeezed his poo out on me and absolutely reeks. Tick number one. Make sure he's dead. Oh, he's latching onto me, little bugger. Pop him. And I definitely saw one more somewhere. He's got one in his belly, in his ventral scales. I've never seen that before. I mean, it makes sense. That's what's going along the ground. Two. I'm positive there was a third, unless I just looked at the same one twice. Did you have another tick, buddy? Maybe there was only one. Oh, look where that one is. Right behind the head. Oh my god. A bit dangerous to get this one. I'll have a quick try. He's pretty calm with me. Three. Tick number three. Now if that was a big firecracker of a snake, I definitely wouldn't have bothered, but 
with how calm and comfortable he was being with me, I didn't see any issue. Quickly grabbing him there and getting it off for him. These little reptile ticks, they don't affect our reptiles too much unless they're literally infested all around the face, around the eyes, and they're just gonna be sucking way too much blood. But little fellas like that, they'll just keep sucking, sucking until they drop off. You see them on our slower lizards a lot blue tongues and whatnot. <laughs> They're always cake with them. They've got them in their ears and whatnot. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with this guy. And I'm even happier with the release site because all I've got to do is run 100 meters up the road. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful red-bellied black snake. Aren't they the best? Beautiful, stunning, stunning snakes. Just so calm. They're so, what's the word? They're so misunderstood and feared for just no reason. Beautiful. So we're down here at the bushland near my joint and release sites don't get any better than that. 30 seconds up the road, running creek system, perfect for a red belly. This is actually the creek system he would have followed to end up where he did. I just got a little rock here, I'm going to send him underneath and he can shelter under there until he's ready to move on. We'll get him out of the bag and then I've got some sad news to share with you all. There's my little mate there, tail wiggling, uh, pooping on me again. There you go, buddy. Disappear under there. There you go. Oh, he's going up. Where's that go? Oh, where are you going to pop out? God, he's in there deep. <laughs> I didn't realise it went that deep. It really shows they get into any just nooks and crannies. Never fails to surprise you. At least I can wash my hands here. Give me two seconds. Yeah, the downpours we've had in Sydney, there's just bloody water everywhere. Alrighty, now a little bit of sad news. Now, to be honest, this happens a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. I just don't share it with you guys. I try to more share the positive stories, the successful stories, the rehab, the release, but it's not always like that. There's so, so many rescues which come in which aren't successful. I predominantly only rescue and catch snakes and reptiles these days, but God, my thoughts go out to people that do macropods, mammals, birds, because those things don't survive all that often. It, like. God, back when I was doing birds and things, for every 10 birds, for example, you'd get two or three that would survive. They're just so, I don't know the word, not hardy. <laughs> Whereas you look at our reptiles and they are so damn hardy. They're so damn resilient. They survive almost anything. For every 10 reptiles you have come in, you might have two die. And it's only because they've been absolutely hammered. So a blue tongue, for example, just getting absolutely hammered by a dog or a little snake just getting pulverized by a cat. Most other injuries they come back from, as you guys would know from watching the channel here. Maybe I will start to show a little bit of the effort we put in when it doesn't work out. Anyway, cut to the chase. Unfortunately, our little golden crown snake didn't make it. Being such a tiny, tiny little snake, it was just too much for him to endure that attack attack, come into care, anybody, his little immune system would have just been going a thousand miles an hour and it just couldn't keep up with the injuries. I mean, imagine a big German Shepherd picking up such a small animal. He nearly got away with it, but he just didn't, unfortunately. I think I ended up getting two to three lots of antibiotics into him. I could tell on the last antibiotic I gave him, he was just a little bit off. He was very jolty, he was a little bit crooked moving his head in weird ways i was thinking oh he's starting to go a bit downhill here obviously he did so whether that was just his succumbing to his injuries over time or bacteria from the dog bite we don't know essentially we gave it the best crack we could and i've just put him back out here in the bush for something to come along and eat he'll just return back to nature so he hasn't died in vain whether the bugs take him away a bird at least he goes back to where he belongs anyway so one unsuccessful one successful and one 50 50. i wouldn't even say 50 50. i have high hopes for our red belly back at home. I just think it's gonna be a very, very, very long, not impossible process. So over the next few months, I'll put little bits and pieces of him in different videos and we can keep up to date with how he's traveling. But other than that, got something exciting for you guys coming in the next two weeks. So 
You guys know the go. You've already liked, you've already subscribed, and make sure you check a comment. I'll see you next week with a uh, happier, more successful story. Mm -hmm.